My grandpa always has the best stories to tell, but the one unexplainable one he tells me is that he got a call during Christmas Eve to a house with six bodies in it. Being the first responder, he speeds his way there and gets to the house. He walks in, gun drawn, only to find a family that looked like everybody had just had a long night and dozed off until he gets no response trying to wake them. He searches the rest of the house only to find a young teen girl in the bathtub with a single tear run down her cheek. Everybody seemed to have mysteriously died at once without any known cause and he never found what it was. <gasps> was it like poisoning? Yo, what the heck? Do you think one person poisoned all of them and then they just poisoned themselves as well? Yo, that's scary. Man, I would hate to be a police officer to like come to a scene like this. You just see so many things. Yeah. Dispatch gets a call from an older couple reporting there's a man standing in their backyard. It's late in the evening and obviously the older couple is freaked out a bit. Several officers show up including my friend who is a cop and split into two groups heading around either side of the house. As they emerge in their backyard, guns drawn, they see the suspect and promptly order him to get on the ground, face first, hands behind his head. As they draw closer, he's not responding and they realize he hasn't moved at all. Rewind two hours. The suspect had robbed a 7-Eleven or something like that down the road and taken off on foot. As he entered the neighborhood, he tried to cut through this older couple's backyard. When he went to hop the fence in the back, he slipped and impaled himself on a fence post. He couldn't pull himself off of it and his own body weight slowly drove him down the post. He had entered at his groin and went straight up to his shoulder. He was literally a human scarecrow. <gasps> Whoa, he just died like that? Oh, dude, those freaking fences be sharp as then. That freaking elder couple really just didn't want anyone in the house, hey. Can a fence impale you that bad like that? Dude, I didn't know. Let this story remind you to never jump a fence then. This one time, I went out on a call of a suspicious person at a house near where I was at. When I get there, the guy tells me that someone knocked on his door and when he went to see who it was, it was a woman standing in his driveway with some sort of child-sized doll with horns and it looked all bloody and cut up. So he asked a woman who was looking away from him what she wanted. She turned around and told him it needs food. Then started screaming at the top of her lungs and ran at him. So like a normal human being, he slammed the door in her face and called the cops. I get there and there are well-defined call marks on his door. There's also a good bit of blood, I suppose from her fingers. So I call it out and start the search on foot. I also had two or three units driving around the area to see if they can't find this trick. What the hell, that's freaking creepy, yo. It's like a horror movie, you know? Someone's standing outside your house and just staring at you. And then they charge towards your door. Yeah, no thank you. So I'm about a block away and we get another call that the woman is back at the guy's house, but in the backyard. <gasps> So I run about a block back to the guy's house and bust into his backyard. The lights are out so I have my flashlight out and I'm looking around. I see the chick huddled in a corner next to a evil doll thing and I ask her if she's okay. She doesn't say anything. About this time one of my mobile units came back to the house and parked his unit where the headlights were shining on her so we could see how scary this chick looked. She had long black hair, her clothes were rags, she had no shoes, clearly homeless and she kept whispering things to the doll. So my buddy and I approached and tried talking to her and she just kept whispering to the doll. Couldn't understand what she was saying so we decided to drag her out of there. The second we put hands on this chick she went berserk. Punching, kicking, slapping, all kinds of stuff. So we're fighting with her trying to get her on the ground and she's not going down. This chick was strong. While in the fight she somehow got away from us and was sitting in a crouched position with her head tilted to the side and making the creepiest growl snarling sound I've ever heard. Then she screams at the top of her lungs and charged at us. So my buddy straight jabbed her in the face and knocked it clean out. We cuffed her and hauled her off to the hospital where she tested positive for PCP and various opiates. She was charged with battery of a peace officer, resisting arrest and trespassing. Later, she was institutionalized for some sort of mental disorder. Not sure quite what it was. My department didn't have anything more to do with her after her booking into the jail. Yo, that is scary. Man, I do hope she gets the help that she needs. That is kind of sad at the same time, but that's so creepy. The fact that she was in his front yard, right? About to like charge in and then she disappeared. And guess where she's in? His freaking backyard in the corner. 
That's creepy as. If I was the police officer, I would just be like, no, thank you. Nah, -uh, not for me. I quit this job. A kidnapping case. This girl disappeared from her grandparents' RV sometime like 5 p.m. at midnight. They were up front. Next thing they know, she's gone. She was supposed to be sleeping in the back. One stop at a rest stop and then there was stop and go traffic. So they figure she must have popped out the door at some point. So we meet them, talk to them, and this is within about a day or so and the girl's still missing. No sign of her. She was 15. Local PD theory is she ran off because she's 15 and wants to get away from her lame grandparents for the summer, but there's a busted window, glass inside the vehicle, so we're treating like a possible kidnapped person. After a few hours, there's a couple different theories on the case. One is that she ran off. Another is that she got snatched. Nobody's seen the girl in almost two days now, and disappearing in the desert for a young girl is tough. Wait, if she got snatched, surely the grandparents would have known? Or like, were they not there? Hmm. Next thing you know, we get a phone call. Naked girl, lost and confused, picked up by some trucker on a two-lane road out there called Nipton. Matches our description. Me and three other guys head out there to meet her with the sheriff who's got her. Turns out she's our girl. She's fine. Nothing happened. Completely healthy. Completely fine. Even clean like she took a shower. Won't tell us a thing. Doesn't remember a thing. According to her, one minute she's in the RV, the next she's naked walking down the side of the road in a 100 degree heat. We talked to her for two hours while her grandparents headed out to pick her up. We had our social services lady talk to her. Nothing. I've seen people hiding things. She wasn't hiding anything. She honestly didn't remember. Anyway, girl was found. She was fine. So we're turned it back over to local PD to figure out what happened and determine if charges were pressed and all. I kept in touch with a guy I knew there because I was curious and we were in a fantasy football league. A few months later, he tells me the parents sent the girl to a therapist to look for repressed memories to make sure nothing happened. Therapist says she seems fine, but honestly has no recollection of her time at all and doesn't think there's any point to delving much further since she has no symptoms and is largely more confused by the reaction than the event. So to this day, we've got a busted RV window with glass on the inside, likely from moving RV on a jam-packed freeway, likely in broad or lightly fading sunlight with zero witnesses. A 15-year-old girl gets out or is taken out and is taken somewhere safe nearby for almost two days, then is naked, cleaned up and deposited on the side of a separate road a few miles away. She didn't have a drug in her system that we could detect. She remembers nothing at all. Nobody knows what happened to her clothes or anything. Been almost 20 years since this happened and I can't figure out what went on with that girl. Still bugs me at night that I have no way to explain it aside from she lied the whole time. But I know liars and I bet the money she wasn't lying at all. What happened to her then? Oh my gosh, what? So who even took her out of, the oh my gosh, right. So we don't know anything. We basically don't know anything except that she was gone for two days and she came back naked, but nothing happened to her. Like she was fine, unharmed, nothing happened. No drugs in her system. She just doesn't remember anything. What happened? Yo, what? I want to know too. <laughs> Yo, no, this makes me so sad. I can't know. Why? <laughs> Seriously, what the heck happened? I thought when she was in there, her grandparents were in there with her. No, that's so weird. I'm so confused. What do you guys think could have happened? Hmm. Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.